Myself Vinayak, uh, we are from Green and uh, basically from Karnataka, uh, Bangalore, Bangalore. So, um, what? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. My name is Oswin D'Souza, and I'm from Bangalore. I'm a self-taught uh, programmer, and uh, I've been working with Green for about uh, six months or so. So, we are here to present a headless e-commerce website that we ma made, which works well with the e ERP Next. So, uh, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, from past pandemic and all. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. I think I'm audible. Uh, from past pandemic, uh, e-commerce uh, sites have basically, uh, you know, has taken a huge boom and. Uh, there are few things which we found with the, you know, uh, monolith type of architecture of uh, e-commerce sites. So uh, this is a basic, uh, you know, uh, uh, analysis of uh, site. Here in the bottom, if you can see, there are totally 34 uh, checkouts initiated, out of which only 11 have been uh, successfully uh, payment, uh, you know, payment has been made. So uh, on a large scale, if you see, only two out of, uh, I mean to say, two out of three sales have been lost. So which is a huge, uh, you know, uh, loss for the company. So uh, what exactly the, you know, when we get deeper into it, the problem got even worse. So basically the slides were, so, uh, the sites were slower and the bounce rate were obviously as the sites got slow, the bounce rate increases. So ultimately these are the reasons what we found to be, you know, uh, which made the e-commerce sites very worse. Ultimately, when we, uh, get deeper, we came to know what exactly people want. The, the people want is a site which has, which is very fast, which is very secure, uh, which makes, uh, you know, Google indexes better and uh, UI UX should be good. So all these are the reasons uh, why e-commerce, uh, what, what people exactly want from the e-commerce. So what we came up is with the headless e-commerce solutions. So this is the architecture. So ERP Next uh, is basically uh, the data source and uh, the uh, uh, items, whatever are there in the ERP Next, we'll be using it from ERP Next itself. And then uh, we'll be using uh, Gridsum uh, basically to build a static web page. Uh, and the data from ERP Next to Gridsum will be taken by GraphQL. Uh, again, we are uh, not using the traditional uh, uh, REST API. Here we are using GraphQL for uh, data initialization and we are using also XState. XState is basically manages the states of the machine. So it will be very organized and it will be very structured so that wherever the user goes and whatever the user want to do, he will be very specific and bound to rules what, what he has to do. So then you have the Netlify. Netlify basically print outs the uh, site and that basically converts the site to a static web page and it basically hosts it. And now here what happens is basically Netlify will call uh, further basically when there is a checkout or when there is login happening. So this will be communicated directly from Netlify to uh, ERP Next and uh, uh, functions will be called from Netlify, not from, uh, to say Gridsum. Gridsum basically initiates, uh, you know, the initial item loading screen and all that will be initiated from uh, graph, uh, Gridsum. So these are all the benefits of using a static web page basically. So it can, uh, it can sales up, uh, scales up to tens of thousands of website users and uh, it's very lightweight. And as I was saying, Netlify is separate host. So even server we will not be having to manage. So it will be, servers will be managed automatically. All we need to do is just the connection. Yeah. So. Here I would just like to show, uh, this is a static web page which we uh, created. It's just a demo. Yeah. So here uh, we can see uh, basically when we just filter it out, the response of the site is fantastic. Uh, it's just at the click of a button. 
uh, wherein it get filters automatically and uh, we can even <coughs> this is basically a static web page and we can even check uh, once we do the checkout uh, these option are anyway it's all uh, it's, it's built on view so uh, it is editable or it can be customized managed Yeah, now once the checkout is done, we can even see uh, in the ERP next with the functions, uh, we can see this is the uh, recent sales order which has been created. And uh, with this, you can also see uh, with the sales order, the sales invoice is also created. And uh, with the sales invoice, you can also see the uh, payment entry is also done. And the integration is so smooth, especially with the Razor Pay. Uh, the reference number as well as the check details, everything can be captured. So now, uh, basically, the, we'll go just deeper into the uh, coding stuff. Oswin will take over. Yeah. So now we are using many resources for, a uh, couple of resources for uh, making this site. For example, GraphQL, XState, Gridsum, and Netlify. Now why we are using GraphQL is because it helps you uh, to mitigate the uh, issue of overfetching. So only the required data is required data is uh, got from the server and since we are using a static page only when the site is built the, that data can be uh, requested and we can use it uh, with the site now we are using xstate as a sta state manager so what happens is it, this helps us to reduce bugs in the app because uh, each state is defined by you and uh, only the app will only go to that state if you uh, 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 trigger the event that is uh, uh, defined in that state. Next, also we are using is Gridsum. Now, Gridsum is used because it can it provides an easy way to use that uh, GraphQL data with the Vue.js app, and it turns those Vue.js uh, that Vue.js app into static pages. Lastly, we are using Netlify. It's like the most important part part of this part of this puzzle. What Netlify does it uh, does is it hosts sites for us for a re, uh, relatively cheaper price, and you don't have to maintain any servers or any any such things. All you have to do is upload your uh, site or grid some grid some uh, repo, re, to the GitHub repo, repository and connect the, that repository to the Netlify site, and it will automatically build and up, uh, upload to the updater uh, updater site. Now, how we are using, uh, how we are uh, making gra GraphQL is, we are using an app uh, called uh, Frappe GraphQL made by Liam Tech. And what it, what you are supposed to do is just install that app with your ERP Next site and just uh, give that function, which is GraphQL generate SDLS. What it does is for each doc type, it will make a GraphQL uh, SDLS file or like that. And each in that in uh, each of that file you will have how to uh, get that data your query example and how to get that data in the uh, site now gridsum once you set up gridsum you can test that query here so once you uh, like which data you want so for example here we have taken website items now website items in that you have to go to the edges and for each node is the each data point, like each uh, item as website item is there. Now, one another thing is linked linked tables. For example, now the item code is there. That is the uh, items, like not the website item, but the items of the item doctor. So you can get the rate from there. Next, this is a state uh, visualization of a simple like state machine. This is a very simple machine because there is only couple of states here. So you can see that in the uh, idle state, you can only trigger one event. Is that is the open event. So when you uh, trigger the open event, that will go to the uh, sign up sign up state. And there also you can see there are only couple of events. You can't trigger any other event or any other function. This also helps you to use async functions from in the uh, services which you can uh, do 
do quickly and this site helps you to design your machine without any functions that you uh, without any functions uh, defining any functions all you have to do is states and events you can uh, see and you can make your own machine before before you ever uh, started the any other work next this is our uh, integration of the xstate how we are using xstate so this is our machine here so you can see that in the f first state it is a uh, main state is there and in that main state uh, itself one more a couple uh, m m many other states are also there like home is there for example now from home you can go to uh, other other states that is cart or checkout or product page or something like that and all all you have to do there is we are in initializing the machine this is the machine which we have pre prepared and then we initialize that machine after you initialize that machine the you can use uh, the use actor from view x state view that that helps you to use the uh, machine machine uh, in all of the components of the view J, view js so like all you have to do is in the setup of the view view js component or page or whatever it is all you have to do is just define the state and and the send function which uh, is used to send the events like the events which i mentioned before like the on is there right that is events next this one is for frappe auth so we are using frappe auth for login of the user so what this does is on, only all all it takes is the user ID, user id and password and gives back the access token and uh, access id and access secret from erp next now next is netlify functions so uh, this is the direct structure of the our app so you can see the functions the, those are netlify functions these are ser serverless functions which are provided from uh, by netlify and machine machine that is the uh, xstate machine which i mentioned and you can see that that is an example of a netlify function so uh, uh, that one is what we are doing is we are uh, sending the we are making an order in uh, order in razor pay so this order will be paid paid for after the payment is done so what uh, what it provides is it, the you can see the key id and key secret is there right so it it is in the serverless function which means your uh, access tokens and all of the other uh, configuration stuff won't be in the front end now this is a netlify uh, netlify uh, port this uh, portal so uh, you can see the functions which i mentioned netlify function we can write whatever you want in that plus now this is the site which we made so the snazzy culture that one what happens is whenever it's built the uh, netlify app will be the you can see the netlify app will be there and the site will site will be made and uh, on a random name it will name will be given but you can change that name in the domain settings also uh, the product uh, production is deployed right so this is a continuous deployment so if you make any changes to the github repository or which is whichever is connected to that one it will automatically build another another uh, site and deploy it also it provides a good uh, feature which is split testing where you can make a subtle change to the change to the site and deploy the same site like just a little bit so we can uh, see which site is performing better with the users lastly this is netlify deploy, deploy hooks so what happens is you can create a netlify deploy hook here as you can see build a hook and then uh, with the documents in erp next for example now if you make any changes to your database let's say a website item is there so you make some changes then you can do do it so like when the document is triggered this netlify hook is requested to that what will what the, that will do is it will automatically develop, uh, build an uh, again the site and deploy it again with the new data yeah basically in the conclusion what we would like to say is this has a, a huge scope because it's uh, basically off track from the uh, regular uh, uh, usage and one is uh, usage of the graphql uh, which is bit uh, you know uh, not many uh, people are using it like if we if we see apart from uh, erp next uh, there are multiple who are using it but uh, with the erp next i think uh, this is a uh, uh, a bit different and yes uh, one more uh, huge advantage what i would like to say is the servers the servers will be maintained uh, uh, you know uh, we, we won't be you know we, we we are not supposed to use the maintain the server so it will be maintained automatically 
So that is uh, one more uh, huge plus point which I would like to say. And yeah, build is overly completely built on view. So uh, ERP Next is also using view, and this is also using view. I think it will be uh, much easy to build uh, any type of website, and it has huge scope. Uh, yeah, I would thank you and any.